Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to hopefully the last video in the A10 build series. We'll see how we do in this video and probably the last video that's going to be filmed in my current shop. So when this video comes out, we will have already moved to our new home, which is not completed, and we will be completing uh, projects in the unfinished space for a little while until the garage gets done. So hang tight and we will get back into the assembly and build of the Skymaster A-10 aircraft. Looking forward to this one being wrapped up. Alright guys, last video the focus was on getting this plate ready, getting the air system installed, finished up, and we are very very close to, to installing the actual receiver gyro uh, system plate in the aircraft. Just doing a couple final touches here and we will be getting this installed and moving forward. So one of the questions that was brought up or asked in one of the last videos was the wing connectors. Uh, how do I do deal with that going forward? So let's take a look at that and I'll show you guys what I do from the fuselage side going towards the receiver. So I've shown how to do the ash lock connectors and servo connectors on the wing side. Basically what I'm doing on the fuselage side is the same thing with the other side of the connector, but what I'll do at that point is figure out where my receiver or box system is going to go and I'll make sure that all my servo lines are long enough to go from the wing connector, tail connector, whatever it is, to that location. So in this case, probably they're probably all about six inches too long, which is fine, because now we get to cut these and make them completely custom and a nice clean install. I try and avoid soldering any servo lines. Uh, they're all uninterrupted as much as possible. If we need to put a connector in between a wing or a removable surface, we got to do it. But uh, don't, uh, I don't, uh, solder servo lines. I have in the past, never had a problem with it, but it's just one more failure point that is possible. So what I'll do with all of these servo lines now is once I get everything positioned and in the right spot, all of these will be cut to the exact right length and we'll put a new servo end on each of these lines and uh, it'll be a fresh system. So we may end up cutting six inches off, none of it off, or, or just an inch or two. But that's how I deal with those servo lines coming out of or into the fuselage from the wing. All right, so out front here, guys, we've got our two battery lines that we've run. Uh, we've run the Zykoi plug-in for the gear system, the iGyro plug-in. And we also down there, there's a two-wire uh, cable. That's for the soft switch for the JR box. So at this point, I know it looks messy, but that's because everything's piled on top. But we are basically ready to install that plate. So when we look at the plate itself, I'll kind of explain to you what we're going to be doing here. So our servo lines are going to be coming up through the appropriate hole um, and going to wherever they need to go. Now you need to uh, think about how this is all working. So this side of the iGyro is all the input sides coming from the receiver on those surfaces. So those we can all pre-run into the appropriate spots. Um, what we're going to have to do is figure out all those lines that are coming from the back end of the plane, all these guys, figure out the best spot for them to go. Now, you know, elevator, aileron, all that stuff is pretty much going to be going in the eye gyro here. So we're probably going to be coming up through the center uh, hole right there. And, uh, but some of them from the wings and flaps and stuff, we have to come into the X bus channel. So we'll basically sort that out as we go. Uh, we're going to get all those lines run up through and then we'll be putting our servo connectors on. So all of our lines can be the exact right length. So a little bit of playing around with this stuff, but, uh, step number one for me is basically get this installed, organized, 
And then once I'm happy with this where it is, then we can proceed with everything else. So we'll put our fuel lines on there, our fill lines on there. Uh, we're gonna be mounting the uh, ECUs or data relay modules from the turbines on the side of the fuselage right here above that plate. So we'll just use some Velcro or double-sided tape to stick those on, and that's gonna work out great for positioning. It's a nice short run to all the electronics, and uh, it should be a good position for those uh, ECUs. All right, so there's kind of an initial shot, guys, just after I laid that tray in. So it was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, what I did was I put the tray up top here, put all the long servo leads through where I needed to, got the tray inserted. The nice thing is you can actually lift this tray up fairly easily uh, while it's installed. And you've got decent access to kind of fit your hand in there. And uh, But it all worked out fine. So now we've just got this big mess here to deal with. So I just got, number one was just getting all the servo lines on that side. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is just get this, uh, start to get this cleaned up. So basically what I do is I just start going through and running things that I can. So I'll do the actual lines that are done up already. Like this one, for example, this goes to the Zykoi gear controller. So I'm just gonna get that installed. So I'll do the easy ones first, and then I'll go through and I'll start putting servo ends on all these other ones and uh, we'll get those plugged into the appropriate spot. All right, so I've spent a couple hours here running all that stuff forward. So those two cable bundles there are everything that I've been running going forward. And uh, all that stuff needed to be run underneath the tray before we actually got the tray installed. So now the tray is, I think, permanently installed. It hasn't been screwed down yet, but uh, it's in its final resting place. So we have our ECUs or data relay modules, one on one side, one on the other side there, and those are all plugged in. So the way I've organized the remaining power box wires here is we've got these four on this side and those four on that side and all those connections are going to be plugged into the X bus outputs. Now with the X bus outputs it doesn't matter which one they get plugged into so that'll be nice and neat and then these four that are in the center here they get made up and plugged into the gyro so that'll also be nice and clean. So I'm going to start to put my servo ends on these guys get them plugged in and we will be very close to being done the wiring. All right guys, and there is the final wiring setup. So everything is installed and put where it needs to go. So that's everything that's gonna plug into the receiver and the gyro. Uh, really happy with the way that that turned out. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do tonight before I call it a night is our plastic clips that are down there, our wire holding clips. I'm just gonna use some shoe goop on all those clips to hold them in place so they don't come off and uh, that'll be it for tonight. All right guys, good morning. It is the next day and we are continuing with the A10. So next thing to do now that we've got all the wiring done is we've gotta deal with our tube situation. So we're gonna get the tubes run to the appropriate locations. So it's pretty simple here. We've got three lines per side. Our Tigon line going to the fill line of the UAT of the air trap right there. We've got our tank line, which is our six millimeter Festo line, the clear tubing, going to this line right here, which feeds the tanks. And then we've got our four millimeter Festo line going to the output side of the pump. So that's what we need to get installed. And we're gonna do that obviously for both sides. And once that's done, I'll show you guys the final result. And then we will be uh, putting our receivers in their final location, assuming that the range check goes well. All right guys, so we've got the lines run to each side. I used the larger fuel line connectors that I have on my website to hold those in place. And now we've got to go in and we're going to tie wire some of these connections here on the UAT. So yeah, everything's almost run there except the receivers. You can see if you look closely right there, I've put shoe goop on all my connection points here on the top tray. 
And the point of that is to make sure that the wires don't come out unless you want them to. So uh, I'm going to uh, tie wire those connectors and then we'll try and figure out where we're putting the uh, receivers. Alright guys, I know it seems like nothing's changing in the front section here, but it is. So this portion is 100% done. So we've got our uh, one receiver holder right there uh, and our antennas are coming out at angles. And then we've got our other one mounted to the sidewall there. So we've got one antenna facing backwards, one going upwards. And just remember with those antennas, um, if this is if my arm is the antenna, it doesn't send a signal out pointing the direction of the antenna. All the signal comes off of the antenna um, perpendicular, so away from the direction of the antenna in all directions. So if you've got an antenna pointing upwards, all of the signals are received that direction. So uh, we've got all the axes covered now with those four antennas. So now with this stuff done, it's time to work on our front plate. So basically with the front plate, we've got all these wires to deal with. So the wires being um, the battery connections and then all of our other uh, connections here as well for our iGyro turbines and things like that. So. Um, I'm going to get this kind of figured out. Don't really have an idea yet. I have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure on what I'm doing here. So once I get this sorted, I will show you guys. All right, guys. So I think I got the plan kind of figured out here. So got the tray installed, got this little spacer installed. This was just some leftover material, but it ended up being the perfect uh, amount of uh, a spacer. So I'm going to create a plate that sits in here. And that's going to have all the battery plugins and everything in this area. That plate is removable and then this tray is removable. Now, the whole point of this is I want to put the batteries right here. So we're using LiPo batteries in this plane and we want to have them uh, as a removable pack so they are easy to get out to charge and also plugging in here we're going to uh, set this up in a way that there's no way to mix those up. So we're going to use these through fittings here for the MPX connectors. Uh, these just fit in like this. Obviously that goes into the plate and then our receiver batteries are going to plug into here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, these items come through the plate as well too. Now these are the turbine battery plugins and uh, basically those will also sit down flush kind of with the uh, the tray and uh, we're going to glue those in place and then basically the turbine batteries just plug into into there. So that's what we want to do with the pack system. So we've got all four batteries are the uh, the new lighter side of RC batteries and if we put them together like this they slide in there nice and easily. We can make a holder for the batteries and then we're just going to have a plug-in system right there. Now for the on off on the plane, we're going to be using this pin switch. This is an AR pin switch that just happened to be the one that was available. And uh, we're actually going to glue that pin switch right down here. So when the plane's off, you'll have that flag hanging down, which kind of looks cool. And then when you pull that pin out, uh, it's going to be the on off switch is going to be hidden right down in that area. Just a nice place to hide it. I think that's going to work out well. So next thing to do here is I've got to make a template for the plate that's going to go in this area. We're going to get that fitting well and then we can work on getting all of our connectors in there. Alright guys, so we've got everything figured out here with the tray and the way everything's going to work. So these are going to be the plugins for the turbines for the GSUs, the screens. These are going to be the plugins for the receiver batteries which are all going to be switched over to MPX connectors. The turbine leads here are going to just be sitting out over here so they'll be nice and easy to plug in and I put a cable holder right down there so the turbine batteries and everything can just sit in that area. Alright so what I'm doing here is we are getting the servo ends put on and these are for the GSU so you just put a regular servo end on and then those come up through the bottom side and then on the GSU side, we need to add the female end on the GSU, so then it's got something to plug into. All right, guys, so I'll show you how I solder these MPX connectors. Now, the collar would make this really easy if I just put it on the other side, but this is kind of the worst case scenario, so I'll do these guys without collars. Um, the 
I guess the female side actually gets soldered to the wires outside of the housing and then you slip it into the housing. So I've got everything ready here. I've got a nice hot soldering iron sitting on the ground. I've got shrink tubing on the wires ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin these wires first and then we'll put them in to the connector and then I'll show you what I do next. So the connector itself has a little positive and negative symbol on there. So just pay attention to that right beside the pins there. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is clean off our tip. And then we're going to get the end here all tinned and covered in solder. So that side's done. We'll do our negative side. Now, like I talked about previously, it's very helpful if you put solder on the hot tip because then it increases the contact area. Okay, so now both of those sides are tinned and ready to go. Now you could tin the MPX connector. The problem is those little pins are quite difficult to deal with. The other thing I find that is helpful with the MPX connector is always plug in the other side so all the pins are supported and they're not going to melt into funny positions. So next thing I'm going to do is plug in the actual lead itself right there. So I've also pre-bent those pins so they're supporting the wire and kind of squishing it in a little bit. So now all I'll do is I'll take my soldering iron and just go around and solder those all together. Again, helpful to have some solder on your tip. And with the proper hot soldering iron, it doesn't take very much. So just like that. And we'll just confirm by flipping this connector over that we've got the other side as well. So we can see we're not 100% on all the pins, so we'll just touch up this side. And there we go, now we're soldered to all three of those pins. I'll just slide the shrink tube over top, shrink it up, and then that connector's done. And then all I do is I just place that connector inside the housing. You can put a little bit of CA on there to keep it put and you're ready to go. All right, and that's what our back side looks like here. So I just put a little bit of CA on the back portion of those MPX connectors and sprayed a little bit of kicker. And that's what our front looks like. So really, really nice and clean. Uh, I'm happy with the result. So receiver batteries go in there, data terminals plug in there, and our turbine lines and our Zykoi and iGyro connectors will just be sitting off to the side here. So really happy with that. All right guys, so everything is basically bolted into place here and uh, just kind of trial fitting the batteries. And that's exactly what I was going for here was a nice easy way to get those batteries in and out. All right, so everything is bolted in place and layout is complete. So we've got the uh, little aluminum holder in there that holds the two servo lines uh, if we ever need to plug into the stuff as I've talked about before. So now we've got our battery pack here. The whole point of this was to have easy access to slip that battery uh, pack in and out. So that's going to work out well. The next thing we're going to build is a little holder to receive the back end of those uh, battery packs. And... Uh, that's what it looks like there. So turbine leads are here. So those can be easily plugged in and just pushed off to the side and uh, everything else we've already talked about. So next thing I'm gonna work on is making a little wood house for the batteries themselves. So we're probably only gonna come about halfway on the longer packs here 
and uh, it'll just be a nice fairly tight fit so when we slide these batteries in they're not going to go anywhere and then we'll probably just use a velcro strap system to push them all the way back in place all right guys well the little battery house is complete uh, you can see in the bottom corners there i've got it marked for when i glue it right now uh, i have painted it it is still a little bit wet but uh, where it's positioned now allows us complete control to get these batteries out nice and easily and should be no problems uh, going forward with that. I think it worked out great. That's exactly what I had intended. So next thing I'm going to do is pull that out. We're going to put some high saw on the bottom and glue it in place and let it sit. All right, so our little battery house is glued in place. The nice thing about this whole tray system is obviously we can take it out and uh, and work on it, right? So I just cut two slots here with an X-Acto knife through the plywood, and that is going to be our battery holding system. So we're just gonna use a Velcro strap, and that'll go in between the power leads and the balance leads on the battery. So that'll be a nice, simple way to uh, to keep that battery in place. All right, and there's what she looks like installed. So Velcro strap, nice and easy to get to, right in the middle of the batteries, and uh, nice and solid. So what we need to do is we need to now change these two leads on the receiver batteries so they'll plug into the MPX connectors. All right, so there we've got the battery pack installed, all plugged in. We've got our labels on there, so receiver, GSU, and that front end is ready to go. So we've got a couple things to do on the airplane remaining. So next thing I'm gonna do is, while I've got good access here, I'm going to put some fuel in the fuel system. So we're gonna fill up the UATs. We're gonna put about a, a third of a tank of fuel in each of those tanks just to confirm that everything's good we're going to prime the fuel system uh, back to the engines so basically get fuel and everything and then we're going to be working on the cockpit all right guys so both pumps fuel systems have been primed uh, everything in here is done so next things we have to work on is the fitting of the cockpit that's going to be a primary thing that we have to get completed and also we want to make two little holder things so when you're firing up the engines or when you're working on the engines uh, these can stay open nice and easy so we're gonna have an arm that comes down that holds the hatch open so all right guys so pretty simple setup that we're going to be doing here so this is going to get glued onto the actual door itself uh, the rod with the ball joint on the end when that face is down like this it's going to just lock into the former so we'll put a little l bend on there and then when we want to uh, get that out of the way we just twist it up and we'll have a little keeper on this side and that'll be a nice simple system so all i've done for this is taken a uh, block here put a hole in the back and uh, threaded in a suitable bolt that goes through the ball link and basically that uh, is the simple system so next thing we're going to do is glue this in place and we'll get this all set up <clears throat> all right guys and these are the times when the five minute high saw comes in handy so you can see there i've uh, glued both pieces at the same time i was going to put them at the back where the exhaust cone is but the problem is if you're opening this while the aircraft's running now your hand is by the exhaust so going to put it at the front of each of the pods and the other thing too is the former that we're going to clip into which is right there is actually closer to the opening on the front than the back the back one is buried in about uh, an inch that one is buried in about a quarter inch so it just works out better all right so while we wait for those pieces to cure we're going to move on to the cockpit so 